Hello, Hateless Gaming here. Today we are going to talk about mining ships. Uh, I want to kind of make a video on how to fit them with the changes as some things have changed and the ideal way to fit them for tank or I guess max mining speed hasn't changed, but um, the tank on them has changed significantly. And before all mining barges and exhumers like shield tanks, now they like both shield and full. Uh, depending on what you're flying. So I'm going to kind of go over the uh, how to build the tank uh, and kind of give you guys the tools that you need to make the fit how you want it to be. Uh, rather than just me handing you a fit, I'd like to give you the ability to design a fit for your needs rather than just, you know, here's a spoon, take it, eat it. I'm going to give you the tools that you need to develop your own fit and maybe make changes uh, based on your skills and uh, your wants or needs. Uh, so without further ado, Let's go ahead and get started. I got my character here that has uh, completely max skills. Uh, this is my main, and he has all the skills. Uh, I'm in the wrong clone, so we're going to go ahead and hop into an empty clone for the sake of uh, playing with fittings. So now we're in an empty clone. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the fitting window. And we are going to go ahead and look at uh, the mining barges and... Uh, Mining barges and exhumers as a whole. So if I open up mining barge here, go ahead and go mining barge, not empire. So there's three of them. And then if I also open up exhumer, which is yes, so it's going to be up here. It's alphabetical. Um, and we have three there as well. Uh, so there's there's three variants of mining ships, and there's a tech one and tech two of each of the variants. Uh, so we'll start with the with the tech two because that's that's kind of what you guys uh, probably hear about a lot. Uh, the Hulk is the big daddy. It uh, mines a lot more than the other two. However, it has less tank overall. And if you guys can see by the numbers there, I've got a couple of fits already made, and I'm going to kind of show you guys uh, the variants and how to build the fit for it. Uh, and then the skiff is the one that mines less, but it has a much bigger tank. The skiffs are incredibly durable. And then Mackinaws don't have a lot of tank, so they're kind of in between hulks and skiffs. Actually, they're closer to Hulk and EHP. However, they have bigger cargo holds so that you can turn them on a rock and then go look at something else for a little bit longer. So they're closer to a Hulk and EHP and a little bit closer to a skiff and mining speed. However, they can mine alone in a belt for quite a while before actually needing to go empty out. So if you're mining alone, a Mackinaw is a really good choice. Uh, a skiff doesn't mine very fast, but it's not going to get suicide ganked, or uh, it's going to be very less likely for it to get killed. Makes an excellent bait out in low sec and null sec and wormholes. It, it it can survive for a minute before actually dying. And that's why skiffs are beautiful. Uh, Mackinaws are beautiful for the same reason. They have a lot of uh, cargo. So in the high sec, you can just leave them alone, or out in null sec, you can mine a couple different belts. But they're good if they're just left alone and doing their thing. And then hulks are good with support. They need a lot of support to work well. They're best in groups. They work in groups of more than one, generally with some hauling support, because they, they fill themselves up in like two cycles. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, and then we have uh, basically the exact same thing here. The proc is uh, the tier one of the skiff. The procure is a skiff. And then the retriever is the same basic idea as a um, as a Mackinac, which has the bigger cargo hold. And then the Governor, or did I get this backwards? 30% ice harvester duration. Retriever is 12% harvester. So the Coveter is basically the tier one hulk. Um, and so they each have their like kind of own different role. And depending on what you want or need, uh, you can build them a little differently. Uh, so that just kind of tells you, like, you pick the base of what you want to start with, and then you can kind of make it work from there. Um, for the most part, uh, the statistic that I'm most concerned about right now is EHP on the ships, uh, because that affects how difficult or easy it is to suicide gang something, or how difficult or easy it is to kill it before help arrives out in null sec. It's a very important stat, and uh, the other factor uh, that is really important when designing your, your fits for your uh, mining ships is actually the mining speed. Uh, as if you mine more, you make more, right? That's that's how mining works. And if you mine more, you can build more, or whatever you're mining for. Uh, it's kind of weird. 
Uh, so mining speed is the secondary stat that is important here. Uh, we don't really care about much else. Uh, EHP and mining speed are the two factors that we really care about. Uh, they can do DPS. Uh, they all have drone bays that can do 150 to 200 DPS. They're not crazy in the DPS area. Uh, they all have now, they all have enough tank to survive um, basic belt rats. Uh, if like a dread spawn happens in the thing, you're probably going to lose one of your mining ships. But that's incredibly rare. And probably worth it because you lose a mining ship, you kill the dread spawn, and you get the, the, the dread spawn. Like, could be goodies. It could be worth more than the, the ship that you lost. Anyways, I digress. Um, so, what I've noted. Uh, in playing with these fits is overall uh, fits on mining barges have doubled in potential EHP. And I have here on my monitor, uh, I haven't updated Pipa yet intentionally. Let me bring it up, my monitor here. So I've intentionally not updated Pipa. I'd be able to show you guys an old Hulk fit. Uh, so this is a Hulk with a medium shield extender. Uh, at best, you're able to get 36,000 EHP. That was like the best you could do. Uh, this is even at 3% over, so you need a 3% power grid implant. You could probably like focus for a little bit of EHP here, uh, and you can probably get another, uh, I think you can fit another power diagnostic. Um, I forget how to do this. Uh, there's a way to add it there. I can't remember, is it control click? Yeah, there we go. Uh, but then we're not over on power grid, we're over on CPU, which is probably a better situation. This brings up our HP to 37.4K. This is with all skills five. Uh, this was previous. Uh, and then now, in the current iteration of the game, we have uh, the ability, uh, even with a mining laser upgrade fit to the thing, to get up to 74, 75,000 EHP. Uh, I don't remember why I have this marked as 77k EHP and it's making 74. Maybe it's because I had two power diagnostics when I initially put it together and I made 77. Uh, that's probably why. Um, or you can trade a little bit of that for uh, for a rig and you'll, you have 65,000. Uh, there's further ways to increase this, uh, but their EHP has almost doubled. Uh, with the fact that they now have the ability to... It's doubled after the patch, so it's 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 kind of neat, and I've been playing with fittings. Um, but people are trying to fit uh, everything with shields. I'm going to tell you that's not quite right. Um, so what we can do, I'm going to kind of go... Uh, we'll go ahead and start with a new Hulk. I'll kind of walk you through building a tank. Uh, actually, let's, let's start with the Tier 1. I guess tier ones are, are a hole in armor. So we're going to go ahead. I haven't actually built a, pro, a coveter yet. So we'll go ahead and build a coveter. Um, so we have 300 CPU and 67 power grid. Uh, it's not going to be nearly as bulky as a uh, retriever or a procure or a skiff. By any means, this is probably going to be the squishiest of them all. Uh, but we, what we want to note are stats. Uh, when selecting how to build a tank, uh, we want to note what the base stats are. We have 3750 uh, shield HP, 2500 armor HP, and 3750 hull. Uh, what that means is that uh, a shield tank or a hull tank is viable. However, our slot layout says a hull tank is probably preferred, as we have two mid slots, which doesn't really give you a lot for a shield tank, and then we have uh, three lows and three rigs, which is very nice for a uh, hull tank. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and assume that we're fitting tech two. We're going to go ahead hard, hardware. We're going to throw our lasers on. And uh, one one variant that you could do is you could just just put the um, you can just put on two mining uh, your mining lasers, and then you can just do uh, all mining laser upgrades. That would give you the highest yield. However, you have no tank, uh, and that's a decision that you have to make, and I can't make for you. And the purpose of this video is more or less to show you how to build a tank on them. Uh, so whole tanks are very simple. Uh, There's probably the simplest tank to build of all tanks in the game, uh, as they only really use three different modules to function. Uh, you run a damage control. So you throw on a damage control there. Uh, we're already at 19k HP. This is nuts because this is equivalent-ish to, um, to a Hulk prior uh, to the patch, uh, which is damage control. So that's already pretty nuts. They've, they got a pretty big buff here. The other thing that you want to do is you want to put on 
um, where is it? Hull upgrades and not cargo expanders. So fun fact, cargo expanders only expand your cargo hold. They do not expand your mineral hold. So putting cargo expanders on a mining ship is almost worthless. The cargo hold is mostly for your mining laser upgrades and carrying, uh, say, you, you have an ice mine, an ice mining variant and a, a uh, mineral mining variant, carry all your crystals and you can carry the uh, ice lasers and the mineral lasers if you choose to do so. Uh, so you don't really need expanded cargo holds on them. Uh, the big deal here is the reinforced bulkhead. Uh, that's going to bring us up to 24,000 EHP uh, just by putting two of these on. They increase your hull by a base percentage. Uh, and they do not have stacking penalties, which is absolutely awesome. I mean that they compound with each other and up, end up being better the more modules you get on them. Um, and then in rigs, uh, what you do is you go ahead and put on uh, armor rigs, and then they're going to be the transverse bulkheads. Uh, again, they, they, they kind of kill your cargo capacity, but they don't kill your mineral hold. Um, anyways, we throw three of these on. And suddenly we're at 38,000 HP. This is what a Hulk was with like max tank before. And we still have the CPU for our lasers. We still have CPU for shield hardeners, power grid for an extender or a micro warp drive. And then uh, a couple of other things going for us, which is nice. Uh, so next up, uh, we're going to go ahead and put on our mining lasers. We're going to go ahead and go uh, harvest equipment. And for the sake of this video, we're going to ignore... Um, like the max with each individual crystal, we're just gonna kind of demonstrate how the fit is put together and you guys can modulate as needed. So a really easy trade off here um, that you can do is if you want more mining per second, you can take off one of these and put on a mining laser instead. Uh, you will give up HP though. Uh, you go from 38K to 33K for, I believe it's 15% mining, uh, mining upgrades. If we go ahead and do a mining upgrade too, Show info on this guy. Uh, it gives us a mining amount bonus of 9%. So for 9% mining, we give about 15 to 20% of our EHP. Uh, and we can make that trade if that's what we want to do. Uh, but that is, an, a, again, a risk assessment for you. Uh, and this is how the tier ones are built. You basically just put a damage control, transverse bulkheads, and uh, more, or reinforced bulkheads and transverse bulkheads here. And then you, you end up with a huge whole tank uh, for all three of the mining barges. So this is for tech one. And then you can supplement it either with additional shields, uh, which I found generally works out. You can get an extender of the medium variety on. We actually might be able to get a large if we go faction. Uh, no, it's not happening. There's no way. So we can't get a large. We can definitely get a medium on there, um, which will extend us up to 40,000 EHP. And then we can also go ahead and throw on a hardener uh, to just boost the shield just a little bit more uh, if we really wanted to do so. And then that would give us, we're over on CPU, we're going to go ahead and go compact there. Uh, this brings us up to 43k EHP. You might be able to go ahead and drop this, and we're still at 37k, which is really nice. It's, it's not nuts, but it's what procurers had before and this is a coveter it's not a procurer a coveter has significantly more mining speed than what a um than what a, a procurer has so this is actually pretty awesome uh i'm uh, i'm pretty happy with this kind of setup you don't really have to move fast you could alternatively drop this guy for a micro warp track and it would give you the ability to move to rocks pretty well uh, as you uh, their power grid went up significantly so they can put on prop mods and that's really nice um and so that's that's kind of how, how you throw mining barges together. And of course, you can make concessions in every slot. Uh, if you're in the fitting window, uh, you can always highlight one of these to see what fits in different slots. So if you put this on, you can kind of see what modules fit in those slots. And it's it's, it's kind of helpful to kind of learn with this and play with this a little bit and see what works for you. And then go out and try it in, in space as well. Um, another big bonus is we have a bigger drone bay. We have 50 MB bandwidth, which means we can throw hammerheads in. Although in high sec, I always recommend light drones as the light drones are more capable of killing bell rats. But I don't know uh, what you're doing. And if you're in a larger group, hammerheads may be viable for anti-gank purposes. Uh, they're more likely to kill a catalyst or two during a suicide gank attempt, uh, which could offset and cause you to survive. Or if you're in a group, there could be, you know, five or six of you guys in a ball and the catalyst land, you guys all just, well, I guess we're killing catalysts now instead of mining rocks. And you just focus on the catalysts if you're in a group. Uh, there is strength in numbers, just like gankers have strength in numbers, so do we as Care Bears and PvEers. 
uh, strength in numbers is significantly good, uh, and we have an edge when we have equal numbers uh, by a significant bit. So remember that mining groups stay together. If there's somebody else in your belt, talk to them, be friends, bring each other up and work together. Um, big time. Strength in numbers is a big one. Um, now I'm going to go over uh, kind of how exhumers fit. Uh, I'll go ahead and put together a uh, skiff because I, I, I've been playing with the skiff just as much as I've been playing with the Hulk. And I already showed you guys a Hulk fit. Uh, but the skiff is going to kind of go, uh, this thing is ridiculous. And we're going to have another, when I discovered this on stream, I was laughing for like 15 minutes. It, it, it This is ridiculous. At the start, the base ship with max skills, 41,000 EHP out of the gate. You don't realize how ridiculous that is. That That's more EHP than a battleship. Okay, this thing's already difficult to kill. Before... For reference, you were able to get roughly 60 to 70,000 EHP out of a skiff prior, and a procurer would fit for uh, about this much. So this is a, a full tank procurer already completely naked, and that's awesome. Anyways, uh, the whole tank idea uh, kind of works. We'll go ahead and slap one on this and see how it goes. Uh, we can go ahead and do that. Um, Go hole in the armor. We'll do the full upgrades, reinforced bulkheads. We'll go ahead and slap whole tank on here. Uh, and then we can put two transverse bulkheads on. Uh, rigs, armor, uh, transverse bulkheads. One, two. We get up to 83k HP. That's pretty damn respectable. We still have 217 power grip and a crap ton of CPU to work with uh, to put things in the mid slots for additional tank. Uh, but this alone is pretty strong. 83,000 is pretty nuts. Um, but if you notice, with all these off, we actually have a lot more base shields. Remember what I was saying? When you're assessing whether to, what kind of tank to put onto a ship, you kind of look at how much health it has to start with and what its slot layout is. Guess what? We have four mids. And only two rig slots. Because we're tech two now. So we, we, we don't get that third rig slot. Which means... Wait a minute. We can throw. I didn't swear. I said it quietly. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead uh, just to have the CPU checked off. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put harvest equipment on this. And I'm going to go ahead and throw some two strip miners on it just to get started. Uh, so now we still have 237 CPU and 195 power grid. I'm going to go ahead and strip the. Or actually, you know what? We'll leave them on because these just take up CPU. And then we'll go ahead and add the shield tank, and we'll see how good it is. So we'll go ahead and go shield. And what's nuts is this 193 power grid is kind of silly. It means that instead of putting medium shield extenders on, we can slap a large on this bad boy, which is insane. So now we're up to 91,000. And then uh, we are going to go on shields again. And then we're going to do shield extenders, uh, shield hardeners. And we'll throw two multi-spectrums on here. Bring us up to 113,000 EHP, again, with no implants. And then we still have room for a medium shield extender, a scanner or something. We're still 13,000 EHP, man, um, which is nuts. It, it's absolutely crazy. And look, we, we've got 14K uh, base and then really high resistance because the skiff has uh, its ship bonuses give it some pretty strong resists. Uh, and then we can go ahead and go shield and we can put another extender on of the medium variety. Uh, actually, just barely not. Would a Republic Keep fit or a large FS9? Just barely. Uh, we could do a couple things to reduce the CPU need, uh, but this brings us up to 118. But wait, there's more room. I said these things prefer shield tanks. Well, if we take these off, which I know will lower our EHP because we were at 118 before, and we go into Engineering tab, uh, there's a low slot module called a Power Diagnostic System. And not only does this increase your power grid, but it also increases your shields by 5%. So if we slap two of these bad boys on, we're up to 116k. Look at this, we have 83 more power grid, meaning we can almost fit that and bringing us up to 116, which is a little silly. Uh, so if we take this off, we make both of those faction. I know it's expensive for a mining ship, but we're it's already 300 million S. We can throw a little bit at the shields uh, and significantly increase its HP by going 
with two large Republic Fleet extenders. And look at this, we're at the same EHP as before, 118k. Uh, and then if we overheat, uh, we bring it up to 129k. And then, what if we went pure shields? So if we knocked out this whole EHP, we take this guy off, and this guy off, and then uh, there's some rigs that uh, can help, and it depends on what you want on your rigs. Uh, you can add additional resistance. It's actually better, uh, instead of putting multi-spectrums on, it's better to put, uh, if you were to do like a kinetic hardener or a thermal hardener for protection against catalysts, uh, putting a kinetic or thermal rig would actually be more efficient than putting on uh, a uh, extender for that specific gank. However, if you want to be uh, protected against all three, a thermal rig is probably the best because uh, it protects against core servers and catalysts and uh, pretty much anything that would gank you. Uh, whereas it, doing EM or kinetic would be specialized to a specific anti-gank. And generally when gankers are ganking you, they've scanned your ship, they know what you're fit. So being general fit to deal with a little bit of everything better is generally a more of a deterrent than being able to deal with one specific thing super well because they just go we ship and bring something else. Uh, however, uh, with that being said, again, this is a decision you can make uh, personally, uh, whereas uh, I can't make it for you. And there's too many different variances and fittings and all that, and uh, these just came out. I'm not sure how often they actually get ganked. Uh, I was looking at Z-Kill, and it looks like the uh, none of these have died in high sec yet, uh, except for really bad fits. Uh, there are uh, solidifiers and purgers and extenders. Uh, solidifiers make uh, active tanking better. Purgers make your passive regen faster. Extenders increase your HP. We can throw two of these bad boys on, and we're at 139k HP. But wait, Hateless. What if we just wanted to send this to the moon? We didn't care how expensive it was. How much EHP is possible? Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, throw cost to the wind. Uh, you should definitely not do this. This this makes it a worthwhile target, by the way. Uh, at this ratio of 139k EHP with uh, only being 380 million esque and not carrying anything, and nothing is truly valuable on the ship, it's not worth killing for profit. However, it is, again, as I always say with suicide ganking, there's two reasons they kill you, for profit and for tears. If you give them tears, they'll come back. If you don't give them tears, they'll kill you once and they'll go do something else. They'll go find another target. Um, anyways, um, let's go ahead and throw on... This video is getting long. I told them for this to be a 10-minute video, and here we are at 22 minutes. Um, the shield hardeners multi-spectrums and let's just go well, let's skip the dead space although dead space is pretty nutty we can throw two of those on there and we get tons in the hp um let's let, let's skip dead space let's 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 go straight to officer um and i believe estimals are the big boys 189k ehp cold uh and then we got 234 ehp <laughs> 234,000 ehp on a on a mining barge with overheat. Oh man, this is this is something else, man. But wait, there's more. Uh, remember those pyro diagnostics? Well, we can make those better too. Uh, those come in uh, faction and officer variants as well. I can't remember which one's the big one. I want to say it's Cormax. So at 183, we're going to look at 184 is the big one. Yeah, so there's two variants. We're going to just go with Cormax. So two of those on, we got to 195 cold, and we can go ahead and throw those on. I believe that there's a shield extender that's a little bit better uh, at an insane cost. So we're going to go ahead and shield extenders. I want to say that the thuckers are a little bit better. So hold our navy is 158, 153. 158 and 158. I believe Thucker is just less power grid. I can't remember. Anyways, there's no officer variant. Uh, so this is the best we can do. Uh, so 195. We can't upgrade the rigs anymore. And then and then we can make the damage control better. Uh, hole in armor. Engineering equipment. Damage controls. Go ahead and throw this on. And go officer. And I believe Cormax is the big boy. Although we'll cycle through these. We're at 219k EHP. 
32,000 base with 76, 81, 86, 88. And then we can go ahead and overheat this 271 EHP. Now we're going to do some rough math to figure out implants and boosts. Uh, you can boost this with a, um, let me take this EHP number. And this is, this is rough math. This isn't exactly the correct amount. So we're going to go uh, calculator, utilities, calculator. Uh, we can take this number here. Uh, we'll just do 271 and 123. And we can multiply this. So command burst can bring uh, 1.2 plus 1 or 1.215 plus 1.215. So we can multiply that uh, for the 1.215 bonus. 1.215. And I'm aware that this is pretending like we're also getting armor and hole in the bonus as well. So this is not going to be accurate after this point. To a degree, there's going to be some variance, uh, and it's not large because, as you guys can see, 90% of our EHP is in shields. So the error of this is going to be within 10%, uh, maybe less. So we'll knock 10% off what we end up with, and we'll call that our final number. Uh, so we're going to multiply by 1.25. Uh, this is for the uh, boost to uh, resistance. Uh, we end up at 329,000 EHP. Uh, we can multiply again by one. 0.215 and this is for the 21.5% uh, shield bonus that you can get uh, this brings us up to 400,000 uh, which is insane but there's more uh, you can get these implants which are really expensive uh, but you can buy them you can go ahead and go implants uh, mid grades actually might be worth it uh, but there are uh, attribute enhancers. There are implants called, I want to say that they are either the Nirvana or Rapture. Uh, but if you get the high grades, uh, they give additional shield uh, hit points. Um, and I believe low grade is 17.5%, mid grade is 25%, and high grade is 37.5, if I recall correctly. So that means we can take our uh, 400,000 that we have now, and we can multiply this by 1.375. This brings us up to 550,000 EHP implants and boosts, which is absurd. Um, and this is hot, by the way, so we, we took the hot number. Uh, so about 500,000 EHP is possible. That's half a million EHP. There's one more thing that we can do. We can stuff this into a gamma and it would give it another 50% bonus. And then there's also a 5% shield implant that you can buy. So we can gain an additional 5%, which would offset my uh, which would offset my uh, my my math a little bit. Uh, you can get a 5% shield implant on top of the Narvana's. Uh, I believe it's slot seven or eight where the shield implant is, and then give you additional EHP on a skiff. So you can make these things really bricky. However, even with this brick, it's gonna be worth killing. A 13 billion esque, somebody's gonna come by and kill it. Um, which is just nutty how much EHP these things can get now. I think it's absolutely absurd. Uh, we can throw it into a C6 as well for additional shields, and I can't remember what the C6 bonus is for shields off the top of my head. Uh, but there's a C6, I want to say a blue wormhole. I call them blue because they're 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 blue inside. Uh, I want to say they're blue. Anyways, it, it, it's the blue one uh, gives a shield bonus, and you would get an, an additional bonus on top of that, um, which makes for crazy EHP. And this is also considering the fact that we would have a, a command ship on grid giving the shield burst, and then uh, alternatively, you could also get a Titan on grid, which would be obscene and would never happen in a wormhole because you can't get them in a wormhole. You get a Titan on grid and give the... Um, the the titan boost uh for shields which i believe the can't remember who gives it uh and i don't remember what the, the percentage is for the bonus but if we look at titans here for a second it's the kaldari one that gives it and it is phenomena generator so we look up phenomena uh which is in turrets and launchers what would be super weapons? Why is it? 
Oh no, I don't want specifically this. Uh, Kaldari, the Kaldari Phenomena boost uh, gives an additional shield HP of, or shield HP and EM resist uh, increase of 30%. I believe there's skills that make that better. So it's, it's just another 30% buff on top of everything, uh, which would bring us up to a crazy number. Anyway, that would just be insane to have a Titan in your mining fleet. It'd be nuts. The Titan would be the target, not the mining barges. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what's possible. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of nifty. It's kind of nuts. Um, but even that being said, 140k EHP on these skiffs is, is pretty nutty. Uh, you're very unlikely to get killed in that event. However, that being said, it's still possible to get killed. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, kind of hoping to explain the crazy amount of tanking that is possible with the new uh, mining barges with the recent... Uh, with the recent change to them, uh, they all got roughly double the EHP that they had before. Uh, and now with this knowledge that exhumers always make shield tanks, mining barges make hull tanks, you're now armed with the ability to fit them better than you had before. There's not a single mining barge or exhumer that got nerfed in the patch. I just want to dispel some of the rumors that uh, some people are saying that they got nerfed. In every way, they got buffed. There's not a way that I can think of that they got nerfed. They all mine more. They all have more HP. You got better crystals. They're just better across the board. Um, I'll do another video explaining crystals in the near future, uh, as the crystals are quite fun. And I like the ability uh, to raise a field, which is kind of neat, or raise somebody's uh, mineral rocks. Uh, currently, they do not make you go suspect, which is an interesting feature. Um, and I have heard rumors that they may make you go suspect in the future. So enjoy it while you can. And the, uh, the the crystals are really neat, and I that 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 deserves an entire video in its own, as I don't want this video to turn into an hour and a half long video. Uh, anyways, make sure you guys fly fun, continue bringing each other up. Remember, if you are mining, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'm trying to learn it and understand it a little bit better. So I'm going to be mining on stream, and uh, getting a little bit better at understanding this, even though it's not the top income thing. I want to understand the game better, so I am getting into different things, even though that they are not the most lucrative things. Uh, but make sure to make friends as you go along, talk to the people you run into, continue bringing each other up, and I'll see you guys in the next one.